I've helped collectors buy and sell millions in rare collectibles. The sale prices in this video are all backed by real data from top auction houses like Heritage. I know what makes coins and currency valuable and today I'll break it down for you. We'll be going over national banknotes from Virginia. If you didn't know, national banknotes were issued by the US banks between 1863 and 1935, giving US currency a local flair that collectors love today. These banknotes all carry the issuing banks name and charter number, which is pretty much the bank's number, making them popular among collectors who focus on specific towns or states. Let's start off with this $20 bill. You can see right off the bat the difference compared to normally issued bills. These have a brown seal and serial number followed by the name of the bank on the left hand side of the bill. So this is the First National Bank of Waynesboro, Virginia with the charter number 7587. There's a bit of staining going on in the center and the right hand side of the bill. This $20 bill graded by PMG at a very fine 30 sold for $264. Here we have a $10 bill from the First National Bank of Stewart, Virginia with the charter number 11901. And you will also notice the margins on the bill are pretty bad top to bottom. And that's because most all national currency banknotes were cut by hand. That's right. Nowadays, the US uses machinery to cut these bills, but back in the day, they were all done pretty much by hand. So grading companies like PCGS and PMG take that into consideration before grading the bill. They understand that these were cut by hand and that can negatively influence the eye appeal of a banknote like this. This banknote looks like it's in better condition than the last one, but it's still graded at 35 choice fine by PMG and it sold for 528 bucks. $2,640 for this $5 bill from the First National Bank of Quantico, Virginia with the charter number 12477. Now I'll be brief on this one, but a few things. First of all, this is what we call a type 2. So the previous note was a type 1. This is a type 2 and the way you can tell if you have a type 2 is that the banknote will have a brown charter number as well next to the serial number as well as the black charter number and also the serial number will not end with a letter. It'll just end with a number. If you look at the type 1, there's going to be no brown charter number and the serial number will end with a letter. Why does that matter? Well, type 1 and type 2s can bring different values depending. There are some great resources out there like the Don C. Kelly National Bank Notebook and other resources online like Heritage Auctions where you can see previously sold banknotes with specific charter numbers and national banks. Combine all of the scarcity of this specific national banknote with the fact that it's a highly great graded bill at a 58 EPQ allowed this banknote to sell for $2,640. $3,360 for this $20 bill from the National Bank of Crewe, Virginia with the charter number 14052. Now leave a comment down below, is this a type 1 or a type 2 national currency bill? If you already forgot, go back a little bit and see what I said about the difference between a type 1 and a type 2. Moving along, you can see that the margins are really bad. One once again, these are hand cut by employees of the banks, but still this is a pretty rare charter number for this specific bank. On top of that, you have a low serial number of 28, but keep in mind that national bank notes like this, low serial numbers don't command as much of a premium as normally issued Federal Reserve notes. Once again, this bill sold for $3,360. Here we have a monster note. This is a $20 bill from the Planters National Bank of Fredericksburg. Virginia with the charter number 13603. This is also a serial number one. Now typically a serial number one bill is going to bring a lot of money, especially if it's a silver certificate, a federal reserve note, or a legal tender bill. But in this case, like I was saying, national bank notes typically have lower serial numbers and they're not as rare and valuable, especially on a very common bank like this. If this bill was not a serial number one and it wasn't graded so highly at a 66, it would not have sold for three thousand eight hundred and forty dollars now keep in mind to get a 66 means that you must have really good centering on your margins in combination with having no folds on your bill whatsoever so it is important to know that getting this high of a grade is not easily achievable but it is possible if you come across the right collection or you're handed down something to you just know that you want to be finding a true trustworthy expert to sell your banknotes to and the best place to start is by getting our free coin and currency 
ebook down below. It's going to give you all the basic fundamentals you need to know how to maximize the value of your banknotes. So go ahead and click on that link below, guys, and let's head over to the next bill that sold for $6,600. This is a Powell Valley National Bank of Jonesville, Virginia, charter number 9924. This is a type 1 bill. Remember, type 1 has no brown charter number, while a type 2 has a brown charter number next to the serial number. This one is also graded by PMG at a choice fine 15. That's a low grade for this bill. So why did it sell for so much money? Well, it could just be a very scarce bank for this specific issue. Think about this also. If there's a few people that collect strictly Virginia banknotes, and this is a really rare one that only comes up once in a while, if ever, they're going to bid very strongly to get their hands on this bill. Once again, this Jonesville, Virginia $10 bill sold for $6,600. $11,100, and yes, this is a genuine $20 United States bill from 1902, so we call this a plain back $20 bill, large size note. I know, quite a mouthful there, but let me tell you, these things can fetch a hefty premium as you see here. So you can see the blue seal and serial numbers and the blue charter number. This is a charter number 10568. This is the First National Bank of New Market, so let me just tell you this. In 1928, that was the first year of issue where they started doing small size paper money bills. Before 1928, all paper money from the US was made in this large size. It was quite bulky, hard to carry around, wouldn't fit in a normal wallet, but man, are they such a cool piece of our history. Now, why do they call this a plain back? So in 1902, you've got a plain back or a date back. Date backs are gonna have the date on the back. Plain backs are gonna be plain on the back, just like this one. You can see there is some dirtiness, a little bit of natural staining going on on the bill, but still, this is a really rare $20 bill and it sold for $11,100. Man, we got some really good ones here. So this bill sold for $28,800. It is a Virginia National Bank of Petersburg, Virginia, with the charter number 7709. This is a $100 bill, large size paper money red seal banknote. So this is so cool, guys. So when it comes comes to large size paper money, these higher denomination bills like this $100 bill are super, super uncommon, especially if it is a red seal like this. So if you have a large size red seal and or a large size $100 bill, you're in for a nice treat because by default, these banknotes are just very uncommon to come across and they fetch a hefty premium in auction, just like this one that sold for $28,800, $38,400 for this Norfolk National Bank of Virginia. This is a charter number 3368. It is a serial number one, as you can see by the serial number underneath the portrait there on the left-hand side. This is a beautiful 1882 brown back bill. When you flip the bill over to the back, you will see the charter number in the center with the eagle on the right and the allegorical figure on the left. Just a very beautiful piece of our US history right here. On top of that, this one got graded by PM at a 58 EPQ. That means there are no tears, pinholes, stains, anything bad to the paper did not happen. The only thing is there's a fold somewhere on the bill. 58 means there's a fold, so do keep that in mind. Do not be folding your banknotes. Also, this has a star. As you can see after EPQ, the star is given by a grader when they think that the note looks really, really nice for its grade. It has good eye appeal. The banknote just has really nice coloration overall. That will get a banknote a star designation nation like this, and this one sold an auction for $38,400. Remember, get your free coin and currency ebook down below if you have not already. We hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you guys in the next one.